Welcome to e Shala lecture series in computer science. This is a course in cloud computing. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, virtualization that is used in cloud. The learning objectives of today's class will be like this. We will first look at an example which is uh, uh, equivalent to a library and a server room equivalence. And uh, from that we will understand what is uh, virtualization and uh, we will see the problems or the difficulties of uh, normal uh, environment of a, of a computer system and hence the need for uh, virtualization from that layered architecture. And uh, we will see the goals of virtualization, what we want to achieve followed by the summary. So, uh, as we have mentioned in an earlier uh, module, let us do a quick recapitulation that for any new technology, we need to know the foundation technologies which for cloud it is uh, distributed systems and parallel computing. Uh, we need to understand or learn about the enabling technologies for uh, cloud the enabling technologies are virtualization and uh, service oriented architecture and we need a dependent uh, set of technologies for cloud it is the P2P or peer-to-peer -peer architecture. So, we have looked at in earlier modules the distributed systems in details because that is the uh, fundamental technology from which cloud has evolved. Uh, we have also looked at briefly what is parallel computing and how it is uh, useful in cloud. Uh, now, today and in the next few modules we will look at one of the enabling technologies which is uh, virtualization. So, first let us look at an example, um, it is a in a library uh, a, it contains many books, library has many books on different uh, subjects which is being borrowed by the members. So, here is our library uh, room where we have many uh, books arranged in shelves. Now, uh, these books will be divided into subdivisions, these are the uh, various kinds of subdivisions may be fiction, may be drama, may be history, may be engineering, may be literature, various uh, subdivisions of the books will be there. And uh, in this library to handle the uh, borrowing and lending etcetera, we have each subdivision being manned by an assistant librarian. So, these are our assistant librarians near the uh, um, uh, uh, shelves. So, each subdivision has one assistant librarian who takes care of the books. The library will have members who will come to borrow and return books. So, these are our members, they will regularly come and they will uh, borrow books and they will return the books. Now, the a member needs to know who the assistant librarian is for uh, the sake of borrowing a book. So, if I have a specific choice as a uh, member, I should know which assistant librarian I should go to in this in our uh, scenario of library and I should talk to that particular assistant librarian. So, uh, uh, according to the based on the choice of the members, member will go to specific assistant librarian and will interact with them for a member for a book. Now, what is the problem with this scenario? This scenario should work fine if nothing changes, but um, in a changing environment this scenario does not work. Let us see why. The first problem is we need to know as a member, a member needs to know the specific assistant librarian handling the specific uh, subdivision. So, new member needs to be acquainted with the that setup. Second of all, if the requirement of one uh, subdivision reduces, then uh, can I merge two subdivisions and say that okay, uh, now the, the need for fic fiction is reduced. So, I will merge it with uh, literature or merge it with something else. So, and put one assistant librarian again the member who is or members who are acqu accustomed to the fiction assistant librarian handling fiction will not be able to get that service. If uh, one uh, sub librarian does not come. Then can we ask another sub librarian who knows this subject of books of books also to handle it. 
same problem will happen that the members will not uh, be aware of this. Uh, now, if uh, a library wants to replace one sub librarian, assistant librarian with another librarian, it will greatly inconvenience the uh, members. So, we see that in this system, if nothing changes, uh, then a new member coming in is the only problem. The new member gets to know the specific choice and the specific sub librarian assistant librarian then it works fine, but any change this system cannot tolerate any change. So, uh, we draw a simile to our, our server room, in a, in a server room I, we have a similar situation, let us look at a traditional server room. So, we have a machine, each machine running specific application. So, we have one machine which is which contains the hardware, the operating system and the application and uh, this machine, this particular machine is dedicated to web servers and it has the windows operating system. We want to run another uh, application which is the app server, then we have another machine, physical machine we uh, take and we run the Linux operating system and the app server. A third machine will run the database server and it will be perhaps on Linux operating system. A fourth machine will run the email server and it will be running on Windows. So, the, in a traditional server room, each application or maybe combining one or two or three or four applications will run in a specific machine and that machine will have one particular operating system to run the uh, application. So, what happens in this traditional system? If one server is down, machines will always go down. So, if one server goes down, say the uh, machine number 4 uh, goes down, then what will happen? The email will not be available. Till this machine does not come back up, we cannot access the email. So, let us go back to the library and see what is the solution for this. How do we solve this problem? So, we, uh, we look at the library and what we want to do in the, our traditional library rather than the members interacting with the assistant librarians, we will create one layer of indirection, we will create a front desk and this front desk will have one librarian who will uh, be handling all the requests. So, what happens to the sub librarians? They will be behind the front desk. So, they will not interact with the members anymore, only this librarian interacts with the members. So, when members arrive, they interact only with the uh, specific librarian at the front desk and this will have the advantage that whether I have uh, the number of assistant uh, librarians or sub librarians that we uh, have whether that reduces greatly to a very less number, whether I have different sub librarians or assistant librarians for different uh, shelves of books, none of these will uh, matter to the uh, members. The members only know the uh, librarian and the front desk librarian and this front desk librarian will be able to manage the whole show with the help of the sub librarians. So, how is this uh, equivalent to our uh, server system? So, our server room we have four machines running four different uh, applications uh, on two different uh, operating systems, one uh, two applications are running on Windows and two applications are running on uh, Linux. Now, what we want to do is we want to have one machine. If we look at this diagram, this is one hardware. We put a front desk like indirection layer, one layer of indirection and on top of that we have put the four uh, applications. Now, we have to understand that these four applications are running on two different operating systems, but this layer of indirection will take care of these four machines running on top of the same hardware. The hardware is visible inside these uh, sm application uh, smaller machines are actually not the physical hardware, they are the 
virtual hardware given made accessible to the applications. This particular layer is called the virtualization layer and with the help of this virtualization layer we can ensure that our server room gets modified. So, now we have one machine. So, this hardware that we see below belongs to one particular machine. We have four applications. We have two different operating systems running in this. So, what is virtualization? This method of putting in direction layer in the environment is called virtualization. So, uh, we, we when we can put this kind of indirection in our computing environment such that one or many operating systems can run. We use the hardware and the software in a, in a uh, simulated environment or even an emulated environment in a time sharing basis. We allow the particular machine being shared by more than, uh, more than one applications then we call it the virtualization. Let us look at a formal definition. A formal definition says it is a framework or methodology of dividing resources of a computer hardware into multiple execution environment by applying one or more concepts such as software partitioning, time sharing, partial or complete machine simulation, emulation, etc. So, let us go back to our diagram. Uh, we have this is one machine where we have one operating system, we have the hardware. OS runs on top of the hardware and we have the applications running. Multiple applications can run on top of the operating system. We can have many applications running on top of the operating system, but there is only one operating system. Now, if I want to run my email server, app server, web server and all other servers on this particular system, I what I need is I need two different operating systems. So, we saw two of the applications are running in uh, Windows operating system and other two are running on Linux operating system. So, therefore, the same hardware if we are able to put two operating systems then we can have the environment like our library in our server room, but it is not possible. Why is it not possible? It is not possible for a specific very reasons. Let us look at the multiple OS problem running simultaneous multiple OS. What is the problem? The computers typically have layered architecture. What is the layer? What are the layers? The lowermost layer is the hardware and operating system runs on top of the hardware. So, uh, OS caters to a specific hardware in the uh, system. So, uh, this is the operating system hardware and the applications, but the OSs need some assistance they uh, are not run in the on the bare metal. So, what uh, helps the OS to run on the hardware is known as the instruction uh, set architecture or ISA. Every hardware comes with a specific ISA and that ISA has the set of instructions. This is an abstraction of the uh, hardware abilities and operating system is written to interact with the specific ISA. This ISA is the abstraction for the hardware. So, what happens is that the ISA is tied to the hardware. So, for a specific hardware there is a specific ISA and operating system is a software which will be written for a specific ISA. Therefore, we have a combination of operating system, ISA and hardware, they are all tied together. A, a specific operating system can be written for a specific ISA, a specific ISA can be uh, can uh, abstract a specific hardware. So, this ISA layer is tied to the hardware, operating system is tied to the ISA and applications are tied to the operating system. This way, we have everything tied to the uh, next layer and all are uh, a part of the group. So, uh, applications to the OS and specific hardware. So, all these will be combined uh, 
to form one group which uh, cannot be uh, open uh, broken. So, if I have another operating system, that operating system may be able to run on top of the hardware, but the operating system will be written for a specific ISA and two operating systems running simultaneously on the hardware will not be allowed. Let us look at uh, this mechanism, but when we say two operating systems cannot be run, we um, think of a dual boot system. What happens in a dual boot system? A dual boot system is a uh, machine which can run two operating systems. Let us see what happens in a dual boot system. This is an example of a dual boot system where we have the operating system 1, operating system 2, one specific set of hardware. The hardware has processor memory, uh, the hard disk etcetera. The storage will be shared by, will be uh, specific, uh, specifically uh, partitioned for each operating system. So, this operating system will use this part of the storage, the other operating system will use the other part of the operating system. Together, they will treat the ISA and the hardware similarly. So, what happens in this kind of case is that one operating system will use the ISA, say some registers, uh, the stack, all the hardware specific infrastructure, one operating system will use in a certain way. Simultaneously, another operating system cannot use the same hardware. We cannot allow because one operating system may be storing certain information in a in one uh, register, the other operating system will not be able to respect that. So, therefore, two operating systems running on the same hardware is not possible. But this, the solution to this is the virtualization. We create a layer of uh, indirection on top of the hardware and put the two operating systems on top of the layer of virtualization and uh, these two operating systems if they are both written for the same ISA which is underlying which is lying under the virtualization layer then it should work. So, this is the concept of virtualization diagrammatically if we see now we can contrast the dual boot with the virtualization here we have this is the these are called virtual machine this is one operating system and this is another operating system. Then the uh, hypervisor or the virtualization layer is running and underneath we have the storage hardware uh, all the hardware resources under this and this way it is possible for us to have two operating systems running on top of the virtual machine the on top of the virtualization layer. So, let us go back to our uh, server room. Now, uh, we, instead of these four different machines, what we can do is now we are not worried about having two different operating systems because with the virtualization layer, we are able to uh, overcome the problem and run two different operating systems simultaneously, uh, not like dual boot, but simultaneously on top of my hardware. So, uh, therefore, uh, now I can have one machine say first machine 1, I have the hardware, I have the virtualization layer and then I run three of these op applications along with their corresponding required operating system and along with their virtual hardware. This set is called a virtual machine and I am running three virtual machines which are running two different operating systems Linux and Windows. Similarly, in, pro, in machine 2, I am running two, one is Windows and another is Linux. In machine 3, I am running three, two Windows and one Linux and in machine 4, I am running again two. So, each machine now is capable of running all four. Any machine will be able to take all four because it is capable of running two different operating systems simultaneously. So, whether I need the mail server or I need the web server or I need the app server, it is fine if I run it only in 
one machine or I can run as we have seen in this example, we can run them shared in all the four machines. So, now if say a virtual machine crashes, we have no issues because we are running the same uh, virtual machine of a certain application in other machines also. So, we can easily uh, make good of that. Now, if one full machine crashes along with all its virtual machines, there is no problem because the same virtual machines are running in other uh, physical machines and therefore, there is uh, no problem or even if these virtual machines are required, we can migrate these virtual machines to other physical machine and run the same virtual machine. So, uh, let us look at the actual goals of virtualization. When we create a virtualization layer, what are the uh, objectives or goals that we have in mind? We want to allow a network enabled device to access any application over the network, even if that application is actually not meant for a certain type of device. So, even for a different ISA we have been given example of the same ISA, even different ISAs can be used for uh, running the uh, application. Uh, isolation, so each virtual machine as we saw in the example, virtual machine of email server is, is isolated from the virtual machine of the app server. So, therefore, they are more secured and they are more manageable, they are not on the same platform. Isolation of the application from the OS allowing an application to continue to function even though it is designed for a different version of the operating system or a different operating system altogether, we can run that. Continuing with our goals of virtualization, it, it gives us the ability to increase the number of users working on an application since multiple instances are now running on the uh, on different machines simultaneously. So, earlier on we saw that one server is running email. Now, if the demand increases for email at a certain point in time, because many people want to interact, we simply run more uh, email virtual machines on more machines and therefore, a uh, number of uh, number of users that can in, that can use the specific application increases. We also have the ability to decrease the time it takes for an application to run by segmenting either the data or the application itself and spreading it across the across many systems. The ability to run the same application on different systems is uh, very useful and that gives us the strength and the power of virtualization. Further uh, goal is optimizing the use of a single system allowing it to work harder and more intelligently. Let us look at an example. So, here is an example where I have one server or a couple of servers having uh, some application and data. This is the usage, the blue is the amount of um, amount of uh, CPU uh, time that is being used. Uh, this is another app server, this is another server where application and data are running, this is the usage and a third set of servers, this is the usage. Instead of running all these in different different machines, if we look at the amount of usage, any one machine will be capable of running the whole data. So, that is what we have done in this, in a virtualized environment or a virtualized world, we can bring in all the applications and data together and we can put it on the virtualization layer and now depending on the need, we can use any one of the machines, the other machines being free therefore, they can be shut down. In this uh, uh, time of going trying to use less as less power as possible, this gives us a very uh, huge advantage of using uh, virtualization. Uh, virtualization also increases the ability or and the reliability and the availability of an application or workload through redundancy. Number of VMs can be run. So, uh, we can have a redundant amount of uh, applications running. If any component fails, there will always be another component which can be e equivalently used. So, after so many uh, days of computing with so much of concern, the question that arises today is why now? What happened uh, now to have the 
uh, virtual, uh, to have this virtualized environment and why we are talking about virtualization so much. We see that machines, average machine has become uh, of higher capabilities. So, machine has more capability, but we cannot depend on one machine because of the failure. So, we buy many more machines and each of these are having a lot of capacity. Therefore, that capacity is wasted. Therefore, underutilized hardware and software resources. We have so much of hardware and software, but we cannot use them. Lack of space. We want to buy more machines, but we do not have space for them. So, therefore, buying more machines uh, makes less sense and we can have uh, less number of machines. If we can manage with lesser number of machines, then it is uh, much simpler. Green initiative that we were talking about a little while back that uh, the less amount of uh, power we want to we can use the better it is for all of us all of uh, all around us. So, therefore, uh, virtualization definitely helps us in our greening activity and administrative cost. Uh, the more uh, the larger is my data center uh, in a in a an organization, the bigger will be the uh, administrative cost, the running cost, the uh, even after buying the hardware, maintaining them, uh, ensuring that they are all working fine, maintaining the software uh, versions, all these are very huge issues that uh, users face and therefore, we uh, need to cut down those costs. So, all these uh, um, uh, reasons have today with uh, all other technologies developing has given rise to uh, uh, the increasing need to use virtualization and that is what is happening in a cloud environment. So, cloud is a fully virtualized environment and uh, we will see how this virtualization helps uh, cloud in a uh, in our environment. So, uh, to summarize uh, this module, we looked at what is virtualization. To understand what is virtualization, we looked at a library example where we saw like our different servers, the different uh, bookshelves are allocated for uh, different um, uh, specific category of books. Just like we saw the simile and we say, said that each application is run on a separate server. And then we saw in our library example that uh, these books will have to be handled by a librarian and we uh, assigned one assistant librarian per uh, such category. And uh, then we saw that the server room has one application, each server has an application running on a specific operating system. In our library example, we saw that in we if we run this setup, then the members will have a lot of problems if they are coming uh, for any uh, different kind of book or there is a change in the uh, li assistant librarian or there is a uh, lack of assistant librarians on a certain day, etcetera. Similarly, uh, in our server room, if there is a machine that crashes or something is not working or some component is not working, it is very difficult to uh, manage. Uh, next, we looked at the goals of virtualization, where we saw that the basic goal is that uh, I need to run, use my server hardware more intelligently than uh, if I do not do anything. So, normally what we will do is we will buy a lot of uh, hardware and we will buy all versions of our software and we will install and use them. But in a virtualized environment, uh, we with lesser number of servers, we can get a better service. So, to give that to give that benefit to our users, a cloud environment will be completely virtualized. And that is what we saw in our uh, goals of virtualization. And finally, we saw that why today um, with, the, with the advancement of the technologies with uh, what has happened to our computing world, virtualization 
is the most suitable um, technology that needs to be that that is uh, to be used. So, these are our uh, references. We will continue with our uh, virtualization and uh, different aspects of virtualization in the later modules. These are our references. Thank you.